Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so the today my demo is regarding the SharePoint st Starter Kit uh, version two. Uh, first, a bit about me. Uh, my name is Kisla Sina and work in CGI in Aurora, Sweden. And uh, you can connect with me on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and on my blog posts as well. First of all, what is SharePoint Starter Kit version two? And you might have already seen it. Uh, and when I saw it, I was quite impressed with this. Uh, it's a comprehensive solution, showcasing, you know, packaging, solution deployment, provisioning, and, you know, different types of SPFX web parts, uses of graph API, and it's a lot to learn actually in this. And that's why I really liked it. Um, why, it, I mean, this has been created by best people, I think, I believe in, and I've seen the list of the contributors, they're the best people in the field, and you can learn a lot uh, how to package a solution, the provisioning mechanism, you know, you can build your own modern portals based on this. And um, in this version, some of the web parts actually work in uh, SharePoint 2019 as well. So, yeah. And so how to do it? Uh, well, you need some prerequisites. You need to be a tenant admin um, and you need to set your tenant as a target release. Uh, app catalogs should exist and you should have PNP PowerShell installed. Uh, you must download the source code or uh, get it from the GitHub through sync and and then just three commands. You connect to PNP online, go to the provisioning folder of the source code and run apply PNP template, and this will do everything. If you face any issues, you can log issues or read the issues in here, there. I actually faced an issue in which uh, I was not able to install it properly, and then I had to switch to a particular version of uh, PowerShell, and the latest one was not working, and I had to also uh, pitch in a couple of more commands to make it work. Uh, that information, you can find uh, it on uh, my blog, actually. Um, and uh, then there are three, you get, what you get is basically three site collections, a hub site and a couple of team sites. There are a bunch of custom web parts and extensions, which you can also look and learn. Um, so I will now show you, if you run the apply PNP template command, what happens? So it's a video, but uh, yeah, I can just show you quickly so we don't. Uh, so this is how you start it, and then it will try to, you know, upload the, all the packages. In this case, it is showing it's skipping because I had already had the packages when I recorded this video. But um, after that, it will actually uh, start the sequence that you apply the templates, you know, uh, list instances, it will create files. It will upload all the files which are needed, like images and everything. And also, uh, it will start creating all the client side pages, you know, uh, and it will also apply and keep on applying the client side pages. Uh, and then it will create the list instances which are needed to, to run for footer and everything. And at the end, you get a message like this, that three sites are created. So let's go to the sites to have a look in detail. Um, so this is the hub site which is created. And you can look at that uh, it has all the theming and everything done. Also, all the navigations are created here. Uh, I can start from the top. You can see that there is a message saying, don't miss the demo on. This is an alert mechanism which has been created also in this. And basically, you have to add something in the alert list. And there's an extension which, you know, pushes this on the top, actually. And then uh, uh, you can see there are different web parts where you can see your latest emails, yeah. your upcoming meetings. Uh, weather, time at our offices, and these are configurable. Like in the My Tasks, you can have the source from the planner or from the to-do. Uh, you can set how long the meeting should have, like how many days in future the meeting should be displayed here. Um, so all those are actually in build, and it's a very good thing to showcase to your customer or also learn from this. You know, If you're building uh, custom web parts, how to build them, how to, what should we thought, Think about how what settings you need you should have in your uh, web parts. That is something you should. And of course, there are footer here also. You can see uh, which is also coming from the uh, footer links actually here, which can be editable. And then um, there is a personal page which can, you can also visit. Uh, this is the organization page. And if you go to the personal page, 
uh, you will see some similar web parts uh, and you will see the contact list your recent contacts followed sites recent documents and uh, people directory also so if you click on uh, on on the alphabet you will get it and recent sites so all these wonderful custom web parts are here and which you can actually learn from a lot also and as i said it also create two team sites which are pretty basic in nature human human sources and marketing also similar to that uh, but it's a it's you, what you need to understand is that it's a sample site which can connect you know the hub, hub sites into different team sites also i also created a demo page to showcase a couple of other uh, like the recent contact this is also web part and also site information which displays the site name the department and the um, email address of the contact of this site you know so that is the teams team sites which are there in this one so now we'll go back to the slides again. Uh, yeah, so demo was done and uh, provisioning. Um, if you like, if you'd like to make uh, this your own, like uh, you want to make a customization of provisioning, uh, you can do it. And uh, there was a very good demo done by Eric Overfield in the PNP virtual conference, and you should have a look at that if you want to learn that. It's very detailed, but what I'm going to show is a bit uh, short version of that today. Um, you can see that there are two commands which you need to really know is that read PNP template, which will read an XML file, uh, which will generate the PNP, uh, you know, uh, through say PNP template, and that can be pushed uh, to 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 the tenant, you know. So let's have a look on the source code. So this is the starter kit XML, and this is under the source. Uh, and you can here you can see all the source code of all the web parts is also available for you to to have a look, uh, which you can go through. And the starter kit XML file is the one which you know pulls all the information which we need to have for provisioning, um, and it will create a PNP file as I mentioned. It will include all the files, all the images, and everything. So I have, you know, drilled down this a bit. So you can see that uh, we have uh, some preferences done here first, then web API permissions, and then you they push all the catalog, uh, all the web parts in the catalog, you know. So that is done, uh, and then of course it needs some web web API permissions also, um, and then it will also push the site scripts, uh, site designs, you know and also the sequence in which the site has to be created so this is also uh, mentioned here with all the template details you can see so what i want to show here is that you can learn a lot from this how to provision all kind of different things you know and uh, you can also see that uh, we have uh, here uh, term stores uh, terms how to push uh, terms to term store if you want to pro use that in your provisioning so you can actually learn from here and then we have the templates, you know, which we can also uh, see how it does. Uh, the navigation, uh, you, you saw that we have global navigation, structural navigation, and how those are pushed. Side field content types, and uh, the most in, uh, client side pages. And, you know, we often have to create a lot of client side pages and put web parts to it. And if you want to learn how to provision them, you can look at, have, have a look here. It has created quite complex pages also, you know, and with all the details of how to put a canvas control and how to put the news, what's the JSON control data you need to use. So all this is here. And so that is how you can actually learn from this and make your own. Uh, basically, you can edit this and remove all the other things which you don't need and just create one site and some client side pages to learn out of it. So that is how you can do also. So that's one. Uh, the benefit of having a look into this and I really recommend if you have not looked into this you should actually um, SharePoint 19 as I mentioned some things work in 2019 also and uh, the apply PNP template command is not available as of now uh, but you can actually deploy individual apps in 2019 farm and these are the apps which uh, will work not all the apps work only some of them and to deploy you can just copy the package file from the uh, solution folder uh, which I have uh, given here and that is how you do so I also have a short small single farm to some 90 
actually. Uh, you can see uh, this is a farm uh, put in Azure virtual machine, actually, which is running. So these are the app, couple of apps I have installed. And uh, you can see that uh, I have a site also here in which I have actually added this links web part that is coming from the starter kit. It's also, you know, can be used, as I said. So this is a 2019 actually site and not SharePoint Online. So that is what I wanted to show you that it can work in 2019 also. And there's a lot to learn uh, if you want to build SPFX web parts for 2019, you know, which you generally don't find on the, on the internet pretty easily. Um, so yeah, uh, references, uh, that's the GitHub link. Uh, as I said, you can look, you should look into the Eric's um, uh, PNP virtual conference video where he, he has explained how to make your uh, PNP customizations for provisioning, which is a re really great thing to learn actually out of this. And I have written a blog about this also, which you can actually have a look uh, also. So I really want to thank all the contributors who did this actually, because it's a great learning for anybody to have it. And uh, thanks for joining me into this presentation. And uh, I was a bit nervous and excited also because this was the first time, but uh, I really thankful to the host to give me opportunity to do this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Great job. Uh, you didn't sound nervous at all. That was really wonderful. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to present.